first example in the partial fractions topic and we're actually just going back to the idea of numerical division particularly the idea of long division most of the time when we do numerical division we have an algorithm in place which is a, a, a method for doing it and most of it is a mental algorithm because we're using our knowledge of our multiplication tables we also can calculate and compute remainders in our head we've got a little uh, system by which we put little remainders and carry them and then it allows us to do the calculation so for instance in example 1a uh, it says 144 divided by 8 now the normal way of doing this would be to construct some kind of division step we'll write the dividend here 144 and we're dividing it by 8 so the, the normal mental process would be we would start on the left hand side and we would look at the first digit which is 1 uh, clearly we can't divide 1 by 8 so effectively we, we say 8 divided into 1 no times and we carry the that 1 into the next uh, calculation which becomes 14 um, sometimes we don't even do that at the point we just look along the number until we see uh, a number that we can divide. So in this case here, would 8 divides into 14 at one time. And we, in our head, we do 1 times 8 is 8. And then we subtract from 14 or count up to 14. And we say that there's a remainder of 6. And therefore that remainder uh, adds on to the next digit along which is a 4 and it becomes 64 and we say 64 divided by 8 is 8 with no remainder and therefore we have an answer so most of the process going on there's a lot of things going on uh, multiplication division subtraction addition uh, all these different things going on in our heads what I want to do just now is have a look at a way of writing that down just even for this calculation because it helps when you're dividing by larger numbers and it certainly helps when we are dividing by algebraic terms which is what we're going on to do which is why we're learning this so with a more formal approach to it what we would do is we would still write out our calculation like that we've got our dividend 144 uh, under the division step and we've got our divisor the 8 on the left hand side so it's exactly the same process we're just going to write down a bit more so uh, we're going to look uh, at the first part of this calculation and we're going to say that 8 doesn't divide into 1 but we're going to look here at the fact that 8 divides into 14 we think that that divides in one time so we write our answer up here and what we do is instead of just doing eight times working out the remainder in our head we do one times eight is eight and we write the answer down underneath the four because it's a unit's value and then we draw a line and a minus sign and we're basically going to subtract our value eight from 14. in other words we're writing down a remainder calculation instead of doing it in our head 14 subtract 8 is 6. Yes, we would have got a remainder of 6. But instead of writing it up beside the 4, we actually bring the 4 down to join the 6 so that we've got uh, a nice clear written version of the next number. So 64 is the number we're trying to divide by 8. Again, I think that 8, 8 makes 64, so I'm going to put that in there. And 8 times 8 is indeed 64 so I write that down underneath as my answer I do my subtraction calculation and I end up with zero that tells me that my calculation is over and that in fact 18 uh, is an exact uh, factor of 144 there isn't a remainder sometimes there will be a remainder but we can see that the answer then uh, is 18 that's our formal method so let's have a look at example 1b 4788 divided by 14 so if i were to use this method i'd write down 4 7 8 8 divided by 14. so by inspection 4 is not going to cut it so i'm going to go along here to 
the, the 7, include the 47. So um, our first thought is, what's 47 divided by 14? When we're dealing with numbers bigger than 10, usually we're a wee bit less certain about our stations of those times tables. You can, if you want, uh, start to think about what these might be by writing them down at the site. All you do is add, in this case, 14 on each time. But you don't have to. You can. Uh, the good thing about this is if, if you get it wrong, you can repair it. So I'm estimating, or I think, now looking over on the right-hand side, 42 looks like a good bet. So I'm going to put 3. 3 times 14 is 42. So I write that down underneath. And I do a subtraction calculation. 47 subtract 42 is 5. Instead of writing the wee 5 beside the 8 uh, under the division step, I'm going to bring the next digit down, and that gives me 58. So I think I'm going to get more than three 14s out of that, probably four 14s. So I'm going to write down four. If at any time you want to check it's right, again, just do, you could do 14 times four. 49, 4 is 16, 4 times 1, I suppose is 56. Yeah, and that's good, it's less than 58. So if I do 58, subtract 56, again, I've got a remainder of 2. I've got one other number that I haven't used it, that's the 8. So I bring that down to make 28. 20 divided by 14, I'm quite confident it's 2. 2 times 14 is 28. Subtract that, and I've got a remainder of 0. That tells me that 342 is an exact factor of 4,788. But more importantly, I've used um, a, a written method of division, which has allowed me to uh, see in each case what my calculate where it's going with it. Um, it's not essential for numerical calculations, but it is essential for the algebraic divisions we're going to do later on and therefore it's really good to be confident about setting your work out in this way. Okay, So there are some practice questions. I would uh, recommend that you have a go at these and we'll get good at that before we move on to the algebraic part.